Welcome to Living in the World International Church. We are here as in doers of God's Word with signs and wonders following. If you want more information about our ministry, visit us at www.litweek.org or email us at info at litweek.org. You will never be the same again. Now it's time to listen to God's Word from Pastor Femi Alaren. Be blessed as you listen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Happy Sunday to every one of our listeners. It's good to be here again to bring the word of the Lord to you. I'm sure you've had a wonderful week and God has visited you like he said he would. Today, we shall be concluding our series of teaching on his word works. This is part five. If you're yet to listen to any part of the series of teaching, or this is your first time in listening to our sermon, I will encourage you to visit our website at www.litwick.org to listen to this series of teaching. I believe it shall be of great blessing to your life in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Today is more of a recapitulation of what we have learned throughout the month, putting everything together so that we can begin to achieve the things that we have in our heart to do. I believe that today's sermon shall be of great benefit unto you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we give you glory and honor. We bless your holy name. We thank you very, very much for those far you have helped us throughout the month of August. Thank you how you have visited us through your, through your word in the month of August. Thank you for making every mountain a plain before us. Thank you for shedding light on our pathway. Thank you for revealing the mystery behind your word unto us. Lord, we give you all the glory and praise. Father, as we sit at your feet to learn your word this morning, we ask that you open our eyes of understanding. You teach us your word yourself in the knowledge of you. And I pray, my Lord and my God, that all things begin to work for us in the precious name of Jesus Christ. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. As I begin to think through the sermon and begin to meditate as I prepared for the sermon this morning, I began to look for ways to be able to get the message across in a way that's easily understandable by each and every one of us, every listener. Then I remember the movie, The Karate Kid, which uh, was quite popular in the 80s or 90s. And um, the student went to a teacher to learn karate. And uh, Mr. Miyagi gave the boy some media jobs to do. He was told to wax the car, paint the fence, and sand the floor. And he told him, wax on, wax off. Wax with your left hand, wax on with your right hand, wax off with your left hand. Breathe in, breathe out. You know, the student eventually got frustrated. And one day he was going to stop off um, out of the presence of the teacher. Then he called him back. And then he began to ask him, what did you learn throughout the week? He said, nothing. He said, all I've been doing is doing your job and I'm working as a slave. My hand is aching, my back is aching, and every part of my body is aching. And then he's, the teacher began to show him, wax on is to block, wax off is to block, and all kind of things you've been learning. So it was not a waste of time. It was getting all, all the pieces together before you become a karate expert. So to say the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord comes in bits and pieces. We have been learning the word of God throughout the year. We've been learning about um, um, the sword of the spirit. We've been learning about the light of the word, the seed of the word. We've been learning a lot of things. Each and every one of those pieces comes together to form the big puzzle so that we can see the big picture. Little here, little there. That's how it all has together. As a matter of fact, big can be defined as small plus small plus small plus small or little plus little plus little plus little. Many of us sometimes in our homes, we have a loose tap that is dripping water. And then to avoid the um, tap causing any damage to the sink area, we sometimes put a little bowl underneath it or a bucket and we allow it to keep dripping into the bucket a little drop on it by itself will not make much difference it's quite infinitesimal but by the time you wake up the next morning you find out that the bucket has been filled up with water in other words as you begin to add 
little knowledge here, little knowledge there of the scriptures, eventually you will have yourself a whole encyclopedia of knowledge of God's word. And then darkness is dispelled out of your life. Remember I've said in one of our teachings that every man's mountain is not the devil. It is the ignorance that he possess in that area, on that topic. That's why sometimes I encourage Christians to study their Bible using topics. For example, you might pick a topic such as um, prosperity or you might preach a or pick a topic such as healing. And then you begin to grow your knowledge in that area. And you will find yourself that you become an expert in that area that the devil cannot rob you of God's blessing in that area. Because he had made all things that pertain to life and godliness available to us. So each and every one of us will be doing ourselves a disservice if you are not making use of what God has provided. So we are here now. It's time to put all that we have learned throughout the month together. There's no remote control that we can use to fast forward the lessons of life. As a matter of fact, the lessons of life is not at the destination. It's through the journey itself. There is no lift or elevator to the top. We have to just take it one step at a time. Remember the scripture in the books of Isaiah 28 verse 13. It said, but the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept, precept uh, line upon line. That's how the word of God comes. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Over the years, I've discovered that um, I read the Bible and then sometimes it does not have any great meaning to me. But as time goes along, the Lord begins through his Holy Spirit, inspire the scripture and begin to connect them together in a mathematical format. I can share one with you. I read in the Bible in the books of Matthew chapter 7. If you read from verse 9 to 11, a very, very common scripture. He said, would a son ask his father for bread and the father give him a stone? Would his son ask his father for fish and would he give him a serpent? He said, if men who are evil know how to give good gift unto their children, he said, how much more your heavenly father give unto you those things that you ask of him freely? Now, that scripture by itself means, doesn't mean much, except that God is more willing to answer our prayers or give us the things that we desire more than we can ask of him. But suddenly, when I read the books of 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8, I discovered that the scripture says there that a man that does not provide for his own home denies the faith, the faith and he himself is worse than an infidel. Now, if I add those two scriptures together and also join the scripture from the books of Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, the famous Lord's Prayer, Our Father, who art in heaven, I discovered from that scripture that God is a responsible father who is willing to provide for me and is more eager to bless me than I'm eager to ask of him. So why then am I not getting answers or getting access to the things that I need? Because God would not deny himself for he has exalted his words above his name. Psalm 138 verse 2. There are no ready-made answers to questions of our life many of us that um, that we come across that's why the bible encourages us to walk out our salvation with fear and trembling in uh, philippians chapter 2 verse 12 sometimes we have to put everything together to be able to work it out i've said before and i'll say it again any faith that make God only responsible or solely responsible for everything is an irresponsible faith. That's why the Bible says, and I repeat again, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. So there's no point running from pillar to post or crying. You need to work it out. Sit down, get the scriptures, sometimes get a concordance, sit down and figure out what is the next uh, step or what is the way out. The car reminds me of um, how various parts of things work together. Um, you know, the system of a car, it, it, it has a lot of parts uh, to it. The engine, you have the battery, the alternator, um, the silencer, the exhaust system, 
and so on and so forth. They all work together to produce that motion called speed or to increase our speed. We put petrol in a, in a car that ignites the, the engine to do things. Likewise, the scriptures. That's why I have often laughed at Christian that says, well, we live under the grace. Now we don't need the Old Testament anymore. That's, that's absurd. If I can say that word, it's absurd. Because the old, uh, the new cannot exist without first being an old. And I hear the same Christian begin to claim the benefit of the Old Testament. He say, I shall be the head and not the tail. I shall be above only and never beneath. Uh, Abraham's blessings are mine. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And I say to them, well, you can't pick the blessing and then neglect the principles of the Old Testament. That's why I want to emphasize that everything works together, the old and the new, unto the perfecting of our faith. The idea is that we keep going forward. Jesus said, until now you have asked me for nothing. He said, ask until your joy may be full. So he that began a good work in our life, Philippians 1 verse 6, that he will surely complete it. Don't forget, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasures. Philippians 2 verse 13. The secret thing belongs to the Lord, that which belongs to us, belongs to us and our children. Deuteronomy 29 verse 29. Whenever I think about the word, work it out. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. I remember my days as a student. And when the examination or when I sit down, especially when it's a mathematical examination, sometimes you're given the formula papers. And in the formula paper, you have all kind of formula. Um, Pythagoras theorem, the sine, the cosine, um, the trigonometry, and all kind of formulas within the paper. And suddenly you have a question before you. And then you are thinking to yourself, which one should I apply? That's where you work it out. You see, you have the Bible in front of you. And it has all the answers to every question you can possibly have. And then you have a question in front of you that you need to use or solve. Life challenges, whatever it might be. Um, they come in all shapes and sizes. And then you have to sit down, look at the formula book which is the scriptures, and then figure out what is the next step to do. But the good news I have for you, you're not alone. Why? Because he has told us that he will send us the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, to help us, to teach us things that we do not know, so that we don't sit in examination all alone. What many of us have done or failed to do is to ask for help of the Holy Spirit. Have you forgotten? It is not by power. It is not by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Don't forget that. It is not by power, it's not by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. So it's God that enables us to accomplish the impossible. It is God that empowers us in doing and willing and accomplishing the design and the purpose he has sent us into the world for. But when we fail to ask for help of the Holy Spirit, he will simply leave us to our own faith. And therefore, we end up messing up. May you not mess up in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Our role, therefore, is to cooperate with the Holy Ghost. You see, life is not a set of rules and regulations. God's principles are eternal. But his method of achieving things vary from person to person. Because as a matter of fact, each and every one of us are individual we are all individuals so therefore God will deal with us individually his principles remain forever but his method varies from person to person so don't ever put God in a box to expect him to work for you and don't try to put all the responsibility on God expecting him to do all for you Remember, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. God will motivate. His word will motivate. His word will energize. His word will empower. But we have to do the work. Now, working out the salvation applies to all facets of life. 
all facets of life. It might be in your relationship with your spouse for harmony to reign in their home. The Bible says this in the books of 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. 1 Peter 3, verse 7. The Bible says there, it said, Husband, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives. Treat them with respect as the weaker vessel, as heir with you of the gracious gift of life, so that nothing will hinder your prayers. So Paul, some version says, live with your wife with wisdom. So he prescribes a means by which we can have harmony in the home. He tells us how we can work out our salvation. Salvation in many contexts does not mean dying for yourself on the cross of Calvary. I think I've shared this before. But salvation in itself means deliverance. Most, some people are actually fighting world war in their homes. So the Bible prescribes a means by which we can have harmony in the home. He also tells us how fathers can relate with their children. In the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 21, it says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. It's the job of the father to always encourage their children and move them forward. So ladies and gentlemen, in every aspect of life, we have the word that is applicable to it. Whether you're a student, whether you're an engineer, whether you're a pilot, whether you're an officer in the army, whether you're a taxman, a HMRC, whatever you belong to, there's the word of God that's appropriate for your situation that can help you dissolve that darkness around you. I've told us in the early teachings that the only antidote to darkness is always light. So go for the light of the word of God that will dispel that darkness in your life in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, the scripture also says we must also work out of our salvation with fear and trembling. In other words, we need to be alert. We need to be full of self-control. Remember the devil, our adversary, is going around seeking whom to devour. The Bible tells us that in the books of First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. You see, the fear of, the, of the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. And when you hate evil and you will love the Lord, you will find life. It provides us with strong confidence. It gives us great confidence because when the doorbell rings, your heart is not afraid because you know the lion is as bold as a lion, uh, sorry, is, uh, the righteous is as bold as a lion, rather. So it costs us to depart from evil. And we find honor and riches in our lives when we begin to fear God. We must not neglect the fear of God in all that we do. I've said this before and I'll say it again. All scriptures have a mathematical variable or has a variable in it, which is obedience. I shared the testimony with us before when I was teaching some time ago the Sunday school. And I told them to open the books of Deuteronomy chapter 8, uh, sorry, 28 verse 1. And this you read from 1 to 13. And I told them, if you can find the word fasting or praying there, let me know. And people did it. They opened the scripture up and they began to read. And they could not find one single word that says fasting or praying. But every blessing in that scripture hinges on the word of obedience. Now, there's two kinds of obedience. Obedience as you obey because people are there. I call that environmental obedience. You do it because people are around you. And you want to you know, do eye service to say, yeah, you're truly... Um, a man of the spirit and there's that one that you obey in spite of the people around you in spite of how popular you will become in spite of whatever people will say that is done with a good conscience towards God now you see the God that we serve is everywhere at the same time we call him the omnipresence God in other words is everywhere at the same time he can see the intent and our thoughts he can see our mind and our spirit so it's important that each and every one of us act accordingly at all times, not at just times that is convenient for us. That's why we need the word of God to begin to work in our life because it separates our soul from our spirit. Remember, 
in the books of Hebrew chapter 4 verse 12 he said the word of God is quick is powerful is sharper than any two edged sword he said he penetrates deep 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 and it goes into the soul it cuts asunder the soul from the spirit the soul is very worldly fleshy carnal but the spirit that's what you relate to God with so that our obedience can be complete we must allow the word of God to penetrate into us and we must also act accordingly not just be an environmental Christian so that we simply do things that are conducive because people are watching us remember the eyes of the Lord is going through and through the earth and they keep them in perfect peace those whose eyes stayed upon him so let your eyes stay upon God and not on any man because your reward will come from God and not from man let me begin to close the sermon it's not going to be a long series or it's not going to be a long sermon today you see somebody suggested some time ago walk as though it all depends upon you and pray as though it all depends upon God working out your salvation will require sacrifice it requires your time, your energy, in some cases, your money. But one thing I can tell you is this. In the end, your reward outweighs the sacrifice that you have made in any department. As a matter of fact, there's no amount of time we spend on earth in terms of our lifespan that can equate to eternity when Jesus Christ returns. The funny thing is, somebody somewhere is taking note. Somebody somewhere is taking note. Let me share a testimony with us. A young man went out to a place. Uh, he works as a model. And when he got there, suddenly um, he was expected, he was expecting to be paid that day, but he was not paid. And because he was not paid that day, he didn't have any money back for transport, uh, transportation. And then he was stranded. Sitting in the hotel lobby, he began to contemplate how he would get back home. He had no money in his pocket. The money he was depending upon is not going to be paid today, another day. So while he sat down there meditating or thinking, somebody walked across him. And the person walked back. The person was quite uh, elderly, or uh, perhaps his dad's age. And then he looked at him, he says, Sir, he's a young man, are you Mr. XYZ son? The boy looked up, he said, Yes. He said, I know your father. Your father is a good man. Many years ago, he allowed me to fetch some water from his compound. The man looking to show. Um, gratitude for the act of kindness the man's father showed him many years ago he dipped his hand inside his pocket and he gave him some money the money was more than enough to go um, to return back home and he perhaps even have some snacks on the way perhaps he was hungry what am i sharing with us ladies and gentlemen is that the word of god cannot be broken whatever a man soweth he will reap is a seed Whatever action that we sow, we will reap it. It's a seed. When we invest our time, our energy, our effort, that's where we are going to reap the reward from. If your reward, if your reward, or sorry, if your harvest is contrary to what you're believing God for, then you need to check what you're sowing. If your harvest is contrary to what you are believing God for, then check what you're sowing. Because life will only produce after its own kind. Each and every one of us must know that. I told you, we're going to be recapping the things we have studied. It is important that we begin to understand the principles of God. It will make our Christian journey a lot more pleasant for us. It will help us to get along with God and get along with most men. Because there are some people who will not simply get along with you, irrespective of how much um, you're righteous or you're good or you preach the gospel. But most men, you will get along with them once you begin to understand the principles of God. So the Bible must not be something that you just simply put under your pillow and hope, hoping that it will keep away bad dreams 
or put in your car thinking it makes your car holy and sanctified. It must be something that you store in your heart. Like the psalmist said in the books of Psalm 119 verse 11, that your commandment have I hidden in my heart, that I might not sin against you. This will help you to begin to work out things that come against you as challenges. Because see, the examination of life never has a timetable. It simply comes as you see fit. And therefore, each and every one of us must be prepared. Are you prepared? Every student must be prepared for the examination. Are you prepared? Let me leave you with that word as I begin to close. That God is constantly seeking those he will promote. You see, we study to show ourselves approved unto God. Like the Spirit of God asked me some time ago. He said, who is marking the paper? And I said, I don't know. He said, read the scripture again. He said, study to show yourself approved unto God. Then I said, he asked me again, who is marking the paper? Then I said, God. He said, if God is marking the paper, then no student can cheat. If God is the one marking the paper, the paper, no student can cheat. So study to show yourself approved unto God. And in due time, he will lift you up. It is well with you, spirit, soul, and body. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you very, very much for the word that has come forth with power and life. You are the giver of wisdom. You are the giver of rain. You are the giver of seed. My Lord and my God, I give you glory for the word that has come throughout the month of August. Father, as we are ending this series of teaching, we pray that our life will be transformed by the word that we have heard. That the seed of the word that has been sown in our heart shall bring forth good fruit to the glory and praise of your holy name. And I pray that the word will not stand against us on judgment day in the precious name of Jesus Christ. But it shall be for our promotion, for our profitability, and maximizing our destinies in the precious name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, the Almighty God. Blessed be your mighty name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise God.